Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online guide where today we're going to be taking a look at the Death Bike, a death bike as it is part of the Arena War DLC in GTA Online, so let's dive right in shall we? So for the price of a gargoyle, which is the bike that the death bike is created from, then for the price of 1.2 million, you can get the death bike of one of three varieties. The one shown here being the Apocalypse version, which I'd say along with the Nightmare variant is the best out of the three, for a reason that I'll be showing you later in the video. The bike is a little different when it comes to customization compared to most other Arena War vehicles in the fact that it cannot be fitted with with shunt boost, only straight boost, which makes sense because if you were to smash into anything side on on a motorcycle then you would inevitably fall off. Other mods include a shield on the back which is completely bulletproof, some saw blades on the front which cut people's feet off, twin machine guns, as well as the usual performance mods. As far as handling goes, the death bike handles very similar to the bike it's based off, the gargoyle. It can do all of the wheelies, stoppies and all the usual stunts that you would normally be able to do if you were just riding around on a gargoyle. But on the downside though, if you happen to purchase the saw blade add-on for the bike and ride around on the street, you have to be very, very careful of curves because... Speed-wise, let's see how fast the thing is, shall we? So it's safe to say that the death bike is much, much faster than the likes of the proper arena ready battle cars, and I've even heard that it's the fastest bike in the game if you use its boost feature. And because it's a bike, it's much more agile, and because it's smaller, it will be able to fit through tight gaps when it comes down to arena war game modes. Overall, being on the bike is definitely the smarter option for players who want to use agility rather than offense and defense to win. Speaking of, defense wise, the shield on the back does a good job of protecting the occupants from bullets. On the other hand, the shield also acts as the actual body of the bike, so if you happen to shoot the shield too much, then the bike's gonna go boom, which makes absolutely no sense. What also isn't a good thing is the future variant of the death bike, which features some kind of weird alien leaf design. It's taller, but at the same time it's also thinner, making the human on board a much easier target to hit from behind. As a result, the choice of either the Apocalypse variant or the Nightmare variant is going to be the better choice for you. What's also bad is the overall defense that the bike offers. Against anything explosive? Forget about it, you're done for, and I've been told that in an arena game mode, if a drone or a remote control car manages to catch up to you and explode, then you're pretty much done for, whereas in the other vehicles you stand a much better chance of survival. Offense wise, the twin machine guns on the front with their close grouping offer quite a lot of DPS, and are easy enough to aim in the direction that you want to put holes in, so definitely some extra marks for those. If that's not good enough for you, you can just go ahead and use drive-by guns. Unfortunately you can't punch and kick people like you can on other bikes, so there's that. So all in all, this is a fantastic bike, not only because of the reasons I've outlined here, but from feedback from the community as well as me seeing it in action. The death bike is very overpowered when it comes to arena war game modes, it's hard to hit, it's small, it's fast, it's sexy, it'll cheat on your wife, it'll do everything. Just don't run over a mine, which seems to be the general consensus here. In any case, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for loads more videos coming to you very soon. See you around, folks.